Those are little transients here at the beginning. Okay, and the first thing we get is basically a measure of baseline, sort of where is your brain in a sort of a uh, sort of quiescent state or a real quiet state. So, so Marvin, uh, let's, let's take a quiet, a quiet brain sample here. There you go. So we got the, uh, the baseline brain state. Now we're going to put him in a couple of different driving conditions. Um, the Sunday drive, which is a real simple, sort of mindless driving task, should be a low cognitive workload. We'll sample some data, 30 seconds or so of data on that, and then we'll pause it and I'll explain what we're going to do next, okay? Um, here's, the, here's our visual distraction metric, right? Anytime, uh, this is a real-time uh, display of where Marvin's eyes are on the screen. If he looks over here, if he comes off here, the timer starts how long he's off the screen. 1.5 seconds is sort of the yellow zone, 2 seconds is the red zone. So he goes back, he's on it, comes off, the timer starts, and he measures that, go back. And this is sort of like historical performance. If you look at the last 20 glances, what percent of them are under 2 seconds? So 85% of his last 20 glances have been less than 2 seconds. That's a good thing. Right? So this is our visual distraction, this is our mental, our mental workload. All right, so Marvin, let's uh, let's go on a Sunday drive. All right, so we're going to in the file. Here we go. We're sampling this data. Uh, this is the uh, <coughs> the Monza racetrack in Italy, Formula One famous track that we're abusing at going 50 miles an hour in our car. <laughs> but it's to prove a point. Sunday drive. Uh, and when you're going 50, you can handle a few visual distractions, right? The, you know, uh, Marvin, look, look up here. You know, he's looking away. We're getting a little visual distraction, but he can go back and still not be in problems. That's not so much the case in traffic, or not so much the case at 150 rather than 50. So we're sampling this data, getting a good, I think, a pretty good uh, set of signals here. All right. Mark me that. Let's pause this for a second. All right, so now the second state, full on racing as fast as you can go, managing the turns as fast as you can, uh, sometimes asking questions, having to do some mental math, uh, you know, anything we can do to load him up mentally, cognitively, uh, to elicit the highest possible brain activity, that's the goal here. Okay? Let's hit it, Marvin. All right, so full speed ahead, put another mark in the file. Marker three. Marvin, read off to me your speeds and your gears, any signs you see as you're driving around. And you, uh, this one always gets people. Do the alphabet backwards. <laughs> Like, you know, we can look at stuff like if you text somebody when they're driving, one of those effects, what does talking on a phone do to somebody, what is working with the navigation system, these are all things that we want to do research around to understand those effects of the mental traction. All right, so I'm going to end that. So Marvin, let's pause that. And. So we're going to process this data and hopefully it all got collected properly. Yep. All right. So 
here's a picture I'm going to paint for you. And, you know, I'm, this isn't a full on research effort here, so there's a few, there's a few channels here that aren't giving me good information, but it, it definitely paints and characterizes the picture. So you can look at, this is a picture of his brain in the Sunday Drive and the hot spots that are going on with it. That's a picture of the brain on the, uh, on the, in the racing conditions and gives you a, a picture of uh, some of the, the hot spots associated with it. They're on the same scale, so yellow means high, and this picture is actually saturation of that. I can see all these values are actually way above one, two, and three. So we could even rescale these things, and this would almost disappear. But it characterizes the basics of the idea. And this sort of quantifies it. You can see the blue is the second state of driving, the pink is the first state of driving. And where you have two bars, you have a you know a good signal for both states. And you can see basically across the board here a lot higher degree of cognitive workload for these states and these and these locations in the brain. There are literally 16 channels that are that are being sampled uh, at the upper and lower part of the prefrontal cortex and four locations in the left and four locations in the right. So you can clearly see that that's showing up. So with this information, we've been able to say, okay, we have a handle, we're building a handle on what uh, somebody's cognitive workload is while they're driving. And that information could be useful for stuff like autonomous cars and how much control you, you know, that they're, they're, they're commanding versus the driver. You don't want to turn over control of a car when someone's not mentally or visually ready to do that. Um, and in general, any sort of operator task that demands that you're paying attention to what you're doing, pilots, flight controllers, um, truck drivers, all sorts of, you know, professional applications, uh, the military, you know, the monitoring radar, who's trying to, you know, make keep track of everything that's going on. You don't want those people to be checked out mentally, bad things happen. So there's all those applications. And then you can look at, you know, consumers. People want to, there's people out there monitoring their heart rates, their blood pressure, how much sleep they're getting, this quantified self-community. Uh, this could help them kind of build a picture, paint a profile of what they're like what their mental workloads are like throughout the day. So. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Okay,